Um, all right, thanks so much for joining our session on this very last day of Dreamforce. Um, this is my third Dreamforce, and I feel like the last day is kind of bittersweet because you got to reconnect with all these great people and meet new people, and it's an amazing week, but by Friday, you're pretty exhausted and you can barely think. But So really glad that you're here. Um, my name is Jody Stam, and I've been at Pluralsight for about three and a half years. My role at Pluralsight is I'm an acquisitions editor, which means I'm focused on finding and bringing on new authors. Um, let's meet the panel. So today we have Don Robbins and Dan Appleman and David Liu. All three are Salesforce MVPs. Pluralsight authors make huge contributions to the community and are actively changing the lives of people around the world. Um, our goal and hope for this session today is that you get your questions answered about why Pluralsight. Why would you be an author at Pluralsight? And we also want you to get a sense of Pluralsight's culture and our commitment to, to changing lives around the world by evenly distributing the opportunity to learn. So the first question we probably should jump into is, what is Pluralsight? So Pluralsight is an on-demand technology learning platform, which means we have content for software developers, IT pros, creatives, engineers, and many more. And at Pluralsight, we spend a lot of time and effort in trying to provide tools and ways for the learner to really level up their skills. So we have things like curated learning paths. Um, we also have skill assessments. And we have mentors available 24-7. We do have Salesforce content as well. Um, I probably wouldn't say it's a library yet. It's more of a bookshelf. Uh, most of the content's been created by these three authors. Uh, but this is why we're here. We're here to find people that are passionate about Salesforce. They love Salesforce. They love teaching. Um, that can help us build out this library and continue to change the lives of people around the world. Some of the, even though we don't have a huge Salesforce library, we do have a huge library at Pluralsight. We have over 5,000 courses, which means we're going to have core technologies that are very applicable to Salesforce administrators and Salesforce developers. We have content that's going to help you level up your skills and continue to progress in your career. So where does Pluralsight fit in the, trails, in the Salesforce training world? Um, you have Trailhead and you have Salesforce University. And we believe we fit right in the middle. Um, but I think instead of just reading you some of these bullet points, it'd be better for you to hear from someone in the panel about where Pluralsight fits. Um, so David, you talk a lot about how important it is to learn every day. You also preach that anyone can learn to code. So where do you see Pluralsight fitting between Trailhead and Salesforce University and everything else that's out there? Yeah. First off, all those tools are great. And I use all of them. And I've pointed people to all of them as well. Uh, the thing about Pluralsight is all the authors on Pluralsight are like super experts on it. Like, it's an honor being here with Dan and Don. Being here with David. Like, <laughs> like there are Salesforce MVPs, which is, which is a great title. And then there's like Salesforce God, which, which is each of these two people. So, <laughs> so really, like, Pluralsight is written by Salesforce experts. Not, you know, there's, no, there's no, you know, marketing agenda behind it. There's no, like, ghost writer writing a script. Like, we choose the topics we want to write about, and then we write the scripts ourselves, too. And um, now you might be thinking, you're not a Salesforce expert. But then the question is, how do you become a Salesforce expert? You become an acknowledged Salesforce expert by doing things like courses for a plural site. Amen. Amen. It's like, David here is, I think, a god in terms of his contribution <laughs> to educating the world. And how did that happen? Because he created a blog, and now he's creating these courses, and it's good stuff, and people see it, and now it's acknowledged. So anybody can do that. You're all good enough to do that. Amen. Amen. No, agreed. Thank you. Um, well, let's jump into hearing more from these three. So we really want to hear about how did they get to Salesforce? What was that career path? And then how in the world did they come to Pluralsight? So 
Um, Don, let's start with you. So what was your career path that led you to Salesforce? And then how in the world did you stumble across Pluralsight? Well, I'd been a developer for almost uh, 25 years when I found Salesforce. And the kind of development I'd been doing was database applications. And I had believed in a metadata approach, uh, an architectural approach where 80% was an engine and 20% was configuration. And that was not the norm. And then I discovered Salesforce in 2008. I'd worked with .NET technologies and early web technologies and more languages than I can remember forgetting. And I found Salesforce that worked with metadata and it was like, oh my God, somebody's done this. So I fell madly in love with the platform. And I've also been involved in community for 20 years at that time. And I wanted my community to know about this and I couldn't find a way to tell them. And that's when I started actually teaching for Salesforce, for Salesforce University. That was five, six years ago. But I wanted to reach out and teach my perspective. As, as uh, David said, uh, the course you do for Pluralsight is about your perspective and what you want to share with your community. And that's why I love Pluralsight. Because it's community, reaching out into community, sharing you know, your knowledge, your, your skills, your wisdom acquired over time with your knowledge and sharing that perspective and giving it away, you know, you're not losing anything when you give away. That's why I love to teach. I have something very valuable and when, you know, if I have a, Dan, I love you and I have a gold coin here and I love you so much that I'm going to give this to it's you. It's mine. <laughs> oh, sh you know, I yeah, need that back. Can, you, can I have I it back? I think you need this back. That right, but like if you hadn't given coin. it to me back, I would have lost it. Well, that's not knowledge sharing. Knowledge sharing is you give it away you give it out into the community and it gets used and somebody builds off of it. I mean, it's almost like you know, primordial soup. I tell somebody how to do something, they watch my perspective and my course, they apply it in their life, it becomes part of their wisdom and it grows. I still have it to give to somebody else. And that's Pluralsight. Pluralsight is community perspective. And you all have perspective. You all have your stories, you all have what works for you and what doesn't. And that's what Pluralsight lets you share with the community. So to me, it's community. That's what Pluralsight gives me, ability to share with the community, and that's why I love it. No, I love that. Um, since you've been with Pluralsight for years, you... But I only have one course. I know, but you've been with us for years, you've worked with us for years, I always meet you at Dreamforce, and we engage other ways. Um, maybe is there one thing, or one reason like really why you promote sales or Pluralsight so strongly as the place to share That's easy. your knowledge. That's easy. Can you bring that slide back up again? The one with the three? Which one? That one. So I'm going to point behind me. Pluralsight fits right between. This is, not a, this is not a choice thing about where to get your Salesforce education. All three of these options are viable options for learners who need to learn different content and learn different ways. And Pluralsight fills this gap right between Trailhead and Salesforce University. Trailhead is you know, incredibly broad knowledge that you can acquire now about this growing taxonomy of Salesforce. Salesforce University is focused on deep dive, instructor-led, instructors are experts. Myself, Barry Hughes, I see Mike Dipolovich out there. We're all instructors that share our knowledge, but we share it in the context of Salesforce University training, focused on certification, focused on getting you up on the platform. Pluralsight is community-driven knowledge, and it can be about any niche, things that may not be covered in Salesforce University, things that might not even be covered in Trailhead, your perspective, and to me, that's what it's all about. It's about perspective from community to community. Does that help? Yeah, that definitely helps. I think that answers a lot of questions for people. Um, Dan, what's so what's your story? What led you to Salesforce and why are you so, here at Pluralsight? So for me it all started when, when that person way in the back row there asked me to write a trigger one day mm -hmm. and I said, what's a trigger? Because I was a developer and she wasn't. So uh, from that, I uh, ended up co-founding a company, ended up writing a book on Apex and about uh, four years ago, Aaron Sconard, the uh, CEO of Pluralsight, dragged me and basically brought me to lunch and said, here, you have to uh, do a course for Pluralsight. And I was very, very skeptical because it's like, how do you trust? Who do you trust, right? And, uh, but I took a chance and I did a course 
and then I did another course, and then I did another course, and I'm, I think, 12 or 13 courses now, both on Salesforce and on careers, because I'm really interested in careers. In fact, there's even a course on Salesforce careers up there. And uh, from my perspective, why do I keep doing it? And, and this is going to sound crass, is I like to contribute to the community, but I'm a busy guy, and I have lots of things to do, and I can only give away so much, right? At a certain point, if I want to teach more, if I want to contribute more, I have to find a way to justify it. I have to find a way to monetize it, right? That's why, for example, my book, which takes months and months and months of work, it, it, it's not for free, right? It's like, and, and that's one of the things. You know, Salesforce University lectures, they get paid also, right? At some point, we all have to eat. Uh, Pluralsight generates passive income. The way it works is there's a big royalty pool and people subscribe, they watch courses, and as authors, we get paid based on viewership. So the more people who are watching Salesforce courses, the more people are going to watch my course, and frankly, the more money I'm going to make. Uh, and that's why I want all of you to join and become authors, because then she'll be able to get all of these people here to subscribe to Pluralsight, and they're all going to watch your courses and my courses and David's courses and Don's courses, <laughs> and we'll do well. And uh, when we talk about the passive income opportunity, it's a real thing. Right? There are people who work, who do nothing but live off Pluralsight courses. They do one course you know, every few months, and that's their livelihood. Now, I'm not saying you should do that. Most people, it becomes a sideline that generates you know, maybe a few hundred or a few thousand dollars a month, just side income. And once you've done the course and published the course, which is a fair amount of work, but still, then you just sit back and you have that passive income. And uh, that's part of why I keep doing courses. I get to share what I'm passionate about in the way that I want to share it, what people need, and at the same time, I get paid for it, which is pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, I put up a slide here that talks a little bit about the ROI that you were speaking to. Um, but you talked about you are a book author, so you've authored books, and that's a really common question that I get a lot from prospective authors, especially in this community. They're in a situation of deciding if they're going to author a book or do a Pluralsight course. It's easy, and every author will tell you, Pluralsight courses are easier and pay better. It's that simple. It's less work, more money. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I agree. Well, of course I agree. But um, and I think it's a great place for branding, right? A lot of people say they're gonna they want to do a book because it's more of about the brand that they're trying to establish. But um, Plural Site reaches millions and millions of users. Would, so you're gonna have a better chance of establishing that brand. And, and you can do both. Just if your book contract, make sure you have you keep the uh, uh, course rights for it because they're fine with that. Yeah. Right. Yep. In fact, I'm discussing now actually simultaneously doing a book course combination. Awesome. Um, so David, it's your turn. So what do you want to tell the audience about? Like, how did, What was the opportunity that exposed you to Salesforce? You know, I got lucky. I was just an average dude in college with a marketing major. Stumbled across Salesforce. Maybe some of you are like that too. And the community here is absolutely amazing. Uh, like Don and Dan said, like, I sincerely believe none of us in our lifetime will ever see a community as, as hungry to learn about Salesforce and that's growing as quickly. You see during the keynote, like, people ask like, hey, how many of you have been to Dreamforce for the first time? And you see half the room raising their hands. Like, the amount of opportunity is incredible and every year it just grows bigger and bigger. Awesome. So we all know you have an amazing brand, SFDC99. Everyone knows you for that. Um, so I would assume you put a lot of time and consideration into what online platform you were going to associate this amazing brand you already have established with. So you've been, why did you choose Pluralsight and you're a year into working with Pluralsight and how's that gone? Yeah, it's crazy to think. Literally a year ago, I was talking with Jody Dreamforce at a breakfast and she was trying to convince me to join Pluralsight. <laughs> and now I have passed the audition, I got three courses out, I'm working on my fourth and uh, hopefully many more after that. So I was very fortunate. I was recruited, and I still am being recruited by pretty much every single Salesforce training company, book, <laughs> online that you can think of. Um, 
and I ultimately chose Pluralsight. And there were many, many reasons why. Um, first off, creativity. I wanted complete creative control over everything I did. Right? I didn't want someone else writing my script. I didn't want someone else telling me what to talk about. Like, if I want to talk about lightning, I'll talk about lightning. But if I don't, then you know, I don't want to be forced to. Um, also, like the price point for the end user at thirty twenty nine dollars a month is low enough that it's justifiable by almost everybody. And even if it's not, like, if I like someone enough, I'll just buy their subscription for them. You know, and I can't say that about other things. <laughs> um, there, there's there's a lot I want to say, and also like the quality of authors. That's the craziest part. Like, all of the authors right now on Plural Site are all amazing. All the courses are amazing. And I really, really do want to be part of that company. Um, there's a lot more I want to, I want to talk about the financial part. Oh, let me go back. Um, so, so it's not about the money, but we got to talk about the money, right? Plural site, because of plural site, I just had a baby, a four month old. Uh, my wife has been able to quit her job because of my courses, that has been great. Uh, I'm not gonna go into specific numbers, but I will say I make more money per hour doing Pluralsight than I do uh, working as a technical architect at Google. Um, I'd quit my Google job, but I like working at Google, so can't, can't blame you for that. <laughs> uh, but, but one thing I do wanna say is, like, imagine what it takes at work to get promoted to get like a $10,000 raise or even a $20,000 raise. Like all the work you have to do and how long it takes to actually earn that. It, it's, it's very difficult, it takes a long time. Like or, you know, you could pump out, you know, a course or two in Pluralsight and it's like you're getting a raise every time. Like if you look at the numbers, it's, it, it, it's really unbelievable. You, you, you have to be crazy. Honestly, if you're accepted as an author at Pluralsight, you have to be crazy not to do it. And this is a ground floor opportunity because, as you said, right now they don't have a full Salesforce library. They have a, a bookshelf, which means all the topics are available, which means you get to have those foundational courses as Pluralsight grows their library. And the guy who has the foundational courses in C Sharp, a guy named Scott Allen, did over a million dollars last year. So there is some serious opportunity here for all of us. That's right, the upside is, is potentially, you know, who knows, unbelievable. Um, the last thing I want to say also, looking back one year, definitely, absolutely no regrets. Um, hoping to do many, many more courses. And if you ever do talk to Jody, I just want to say like, I was worried when I first talked to her a year ago, like, all right, here's, a, here's like a sales rep. I don't know if I can really trust what she says. <laughs> uh, a year ago, everything she said, you know, has come true. Uh, she is an amazing person. If she ever wanted to babysit my four-month-old kid, I would let her. Like I would trust Which I her totally anything. want to. So <laughs> cute. Okay. They, yeah. they, the, the executive team has a lot of integrity, right? So I've been around long enough, so when the company was a lot smaller. Uh, I know Aaron Sconard, the CEO. If I send them an email, I know he's, he's going to respond. He's going to pay attention to it. Uh, they have been very honest, very transparent. Every quarter they have author calls where they share how they're doing, the numbers, the strategy. Uh, we really are part of the plural site family, not just you know content generators or employees. Just like they have the Ohana, the spirit of partnership here, I think there's a real sense of that in plural site as well. Yeah. So I, I know a couple of authors who've done Lynda.com courses and courses for other online training companies, and I try to <clears throat> steer them towards plural site and have with a couple of them. And their experiences that they tell me is it's completely different. It's, it's very similar to this community, as Dan says. Um, and there's something else I wanted to mention about why I promote Pluralsight. I love the technology. And if you try it, and you can try it for free, and, or you can get a, a you know, free trial, the technology is, you know, it's anytime, anywhere learning, which is one of the other reasons I love about it. You, you don't have to, you know, if you're going to come to a Salesforce course and sit in a week with me, you're going to have an immersive experience, and that is a unique experience, and you're going to learn a ton, but a lot of people can't do it. A lot of people only have a few moments during a day or are sitting on the bus, and they've actually mastered the technology of being able to get at their content through a mobile device anywhere, anytime, download the courses, do them on the plane, even if you don't have Wi-Fi, do it on the underground subway, and that's, 
what I use it for. I use Pluralsight to fill in my knowledge gaps. I had to learn Node.js really rapidly about three weeks ago for a project I'm doing with Salesforce. I know JavaScript, but I don't know JS. I've heard about it for years, but I never really went into it. So I go on Pluralsight, and you know, there's the three courses that I need to do. And by the way, there's a course on structured JavaScript, and I'm teaching Lightning. Maybe I want to bone up on my structured JavaScript. It's all there, and I did it in an evening. And that's what I love about Pluralsight. When you need it, where you need it, for as much as you need, through fantastic technology that's constantly improving, I love that. I mean, I'm, I'm passionate yeah, about that. That's the coolest fringe benefit. When you're an author, you get a free subscription, so. Yes, you do. <laughs> can, can I add two more things? Yeah, please. All right, for, first off, um, Pluralsight is really, really serious about targeting the Salesforce industry. That was also one of the main reasons why I joined. There are a lot of other companies that you know do books or whatever it is. Like, Salesforce is just a small part of it, but Pluralsight, like, you go to the all hands meetings with the companies and, and they have Salesforce as like a top priority for the entire company. Even though there are thousands and thousands of courses and authors, it, it's great to see that. Um, a second thing, this is, this is something I didn't expect. This is the first time I've ever like contracted or had like my own business. Like business expensing things is, <laughs> is the best. Like I have a mortgage, now I can business expense a significant part of that. That's, that's a lot, a lot of money. I'm going to business expense Dreamforce. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. Um, well, we have a few minutes left. Do you want to just each of you say like your one last like motivating and insp inspirational comment to the audience to come author at Pluralsight? And sure. One last. Um, money's really cool. I like money. But I'm passionate about teaching something I'm passionate about. And what this gives me an opportunity to do is to focus on what I'm passionate about, my perspective on it, and delivering it to the target audience that I want to share my knowledge with. Of any other mechanism, and I write for Trailhead, I teach for Salesforce U, and I have a Pluralsight course. I've got, I've got two outlines in the backlog that I'm trying to get back to. Uh, this is the target for getting the niche out of your specialty that you're passionate about, that you want to share. You all are experts at something. And if you're not today, maybe you will be in six months. And if you have the passion to share that, this is the outlet. So people call me a god <laughs> and make a fuss and all that kind of stuff. But I swear, it's nothing special, right? Uh, all it takes to become sitting up here, and one of those people that people ask questions and so on, is to express yourself, right? It's without fear, just express yourself. And there are lots of ways to do it, whether it's books, and I think Pluralsight is a great way to do that. You do a course on Pluralsight, and suddenly you become the person that people will ask questions of. And on your resume, it'll be, I taught that this. And, and you know, there's a lot of people who focus on certifications. Trust me a course, a book, it is the best certification in the world. It's even better than, than getting a, a, a certificate from Salesforce because you become one of the people who sort of defines the truth. Gotcha. Uh, I sincerely believe you have to be crazy not, not to want to be an author on Pluralsight. The only caveat is you have to pass the audition. So right. if you pass the audition and you don't do it, you really are crazy. Uh, my only regret is that I didn't start earlier. It's only been a year for me. I wish I started earlier. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, I hope everyone. I have a question there. Oh, we have a question? Yes. I see. So the question is how much time did you spend on your audition and how did you pick the content? Um, my audition. Let's see, so the audition is a 10 minute video, roughly. Uh, I spent 10 hours on it. I did it on my MacBook. Um, I, talked, I talked about what I ultimately wanted to teach. Right, and I wanted to teach, here's how to write your first trigger. And so that's exactly what I did my audition on. Thank you. Right. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, especially that first course is going to take a lot of time as, as you get used to it and polish it, and, and you have to meet their standards, but you get faster. So I am much faster doing a course now, 
And, and authors work different ways. For example, I script my courses. I'm a writer, so I literally have a script. But there are other authors who speak as if it was a presentation. And, and so once I figured out that I need to script my courses, my productivity shot up enormously. So everybody ha finds their own way. But having the freedom to find your own way is a really big deal. Yeah, absolutely. And the 10-minute audition is kind of part of this process. Even though it is a chance for us, Pluralsight, to look at your teaching style in this medium, it's really, we feel, a really important chance for you to start perfecting these skills before you get into a course. Yeah. Oh, oh the you want me to answer the question? You uh, what you what was the, the question was how long did it take the audition well, take? What yeah. content did you use? Use the mic, Mike? It's not on. It's not on? Is it uh, working? What, what content? What, what content, content did I use? Um, I think I had put together a small presentation around mobile with Salesforce, um, Visual Force and Sentia Touch. Right. And I had a couple of slides, and then I, re I script, I like, I'm like Dan. I, although I do talk a lot, you know, teaching we talk a lot of extemporaneous and usually go too deep. When I get in front of a microphone, I can't do it. So I actually wanted to script it, and I had to script it. It probably took me, I don't know, a couple of hours to do the audition tape. And then I also scripted the, the course I did, and the course probably took me 80 to 100 hours. And a lot of it was going back and redoing, oh, that didn't work. Let me try that a different way. And then as I got into it, it got faster. Right. For example, now I don't redo at all. I, I literally, it's one pass through the course, and it's good because I've, I basically am editing on the fly, which works for me. Right. Yeah, there are also technical aspects of producing a course, and that's one of the neat things about Pluralsight. They give you sort of a template, a technical template for the, the slides and the deck, and you have to follow certain editorial standards and guidelines, which is great, because otherwise it's like going out on YouTube and seeing all those tutorials on YouTube and which ones are good, and so it gives a nice consistency, and they've improved their methods their templates, their editorial and supporting resources. So compared to four years ago, I'm, I'm, it's, it's I'm much, much better. Much different. Yep. Yeah. Answer the question? Thank you. Awesome. Great. Um, well, so thank you so much for joining. Um, you can learn, there's more information. If you want to get your questions answered and get more information, you can go to the link provided. We have a booth right here. You can talk to anyone at the Pluralsight booth. Um, and these three also have generously offered up their time to help anyone that's interested in authoring to answer your questions. Obviously, you're going to get honest feedback from them and they'll also be able to help you through the process. Um, so write down their information. And then um, we also have t-shirts. So we have SF, SFDC99 t-shirts slash plural site shirts. Um, those are at the booth as well. I hope everyone will grab one. Um, we even have women's sizes, so make sure you take you go grab one. And you have trial, you have trial members. Oh yeah, thank you. Oh, and we have trial cards. So we have 30-day um, subscriptions to Pluralsight for free if you just go grab a trial card. Yes, watch our courses. Yeah. That's also true. Thank you. Thank you.